life. How does life itself really function? In all its different forms, from the largest all the way down to the minuscule. When one studies and researches this, the field is called life sciences. It's all about how living organisms function, interact within, and affect their surroundings. Biology and medicine are the two major areas of life sciences. But here, we also need scientists in engineering, chemistry, and even physics. An essential part of this is research around life's most basic building block, the cell. It involves, among other things, discovery and mapping of all the different cell types. To understand how a cell reads its own DNA code, to find the cell's hidden tasks, and to understand how cells get the energy they need to survive. If scientists succeed in uncovering all the secrets of the cell, it can be a tremendous benefit for all humanity. In 1665, an English physicist named Robert Hooke looked through a primitive microscope at a thin slice of cord. What he saw, he called cells. They were not alive, and he couldn't see through them the way we can today, but it was the beginning. About 10 years later, a Dutchman named Antony von Leeuwenhoek improved on Hooke's microscope. In fact, Leeuwenhoek is called the father of the modern microscope. He observed living cells for the first time. In the 1700s, as microscopes became more powerful, scientists were able to see and understand more and more. By 1830, it was clear that cells had a nucleus or a central element and that it was suspended in a thick liquid. By the end of the 1830s, two scientists, botanist Matthias Schleiden and biologist Theodor Schwann, both asserted that every living thing was composed of one or more cells. This was a startling realization. In 1858, Rudolf Virchow saw cells divided and came to an equally astounding conclusion. All cells come from other cells. Virchow also felt that the root of many diseases was in this world of cells. Together, the work of Schleiden, Schwann, and Virchow gave form to what we now call the cell theory, the basis of modern biology. All cells have three things in common, no matter what type of cell they are. All cells have a cell membrane, which separates the inside of the cell from its environment, cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like fluid, and DNA, which is the cell genetic material. There are two broad categories of cells. The first category is eukaryotic cells, they have organelles, which include the nucleus and other special parts. Eukaryotic cells are more advanced complex cells, such as those found in plants and animals. The second category is prokaryotic cells. They don't have a nucleus or membrane-enclosed organelles. They do have genetic material but it's not contained within a nucleus. Prokaryotic cells are always one-celled or unicellular organisms, such as bacteria. So what is an organelle? Organelle means little organ. Organelles are the specialized part of a cell that have unique jobs to perform. Let's start with the nucleus, or the control center of the cell. The nucleus contains DNA, or genetic material. DNA dictates the cell what it's going to do and how it's going to do it. Chromatin is the tangled spread out form of DNA found inside the nuclear membrane. When a cell is ready to divide, DNA condenses into structures known as chromosomes. The nucleus also contains a nucleolus, which is a structure where ribosomes are made. After ribosomes leave the nucleus, 
they will have the important job of synthesizing or making proteins. Outside the nucleus, the ribosomes and the rest of the organelles float around in the cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like substance. Ribosomes may wander freely within the cytoplasm or attach to the endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes abbreviated as ER. There are two types of ER. Rough ER has ribosomes attached to it, and smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes attached to it. The endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane-enclosed passageway for transporting materials, such as the proteins synthesized by ribosomes. Proteins and other materials emerge from the endoplasmic reticulum in small vesicles. Where the Golgi apparatus, sometimes called the Golgi body, receives them. As proteins move through the Golgi body, they are customized into forms the cell can use. The Golgi body does this by folding the proteins into usable shapes or adding other materials onto them, such as lipids or carbohydrates. Vacuoles are sac-like structures that store different materials. Here in this plant cell, the central vacuole stores water. Going back to the animal cell, you'll see an organelle called a lysosome. Lysosomes are the garbage collectors that take in damaged or worn out cell parts. They are filled with enzymes that break down the cellular debris. The mitochondrion is an organelle that is the powerhouse for both animal and plant cells. During a process called cellular respiration, the mitochondria make ATP molecules that provide energy for all the cell's activities. Cells that need more energy often have more mitochondria. Meanwhile, the cell maintains its shape through a cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton includes the thread-like microfilaments, which are made of protein, and microtubules, which are thin hollow tubes. Some organisms, such as plants, that are photoautotrophic, meaning they capture sunlight for energy, have cells with an organelle called chloroplast. The chloroplast is where photosynthesis happens. It's green because it has a green pigment called chlorophyll. Plant cells also have a cell wall outside their cell membranes that shape support, and protect the plant cell. Animal cells never have a cell wall. There are many unique structures that only some cells have. Here are just a few. In humans, for example, the respiratory tract is lined up with cells that have cilia. These are microscopic hair-like projections that can move in waves. This feature helps trap inhaled particles in the air and expels them when you cough. Another unique feature in some cells is flagella. Some bacteria have flagella. A flagellum is like a little tail that can help a cell move or propel itself. The only human cell that has a flagellum is a sperm cell. In summary, Remember, eukaryotic cells are plant and animal cells with a nucleus and membrane-enclosed organelles, while prokaryotic cells are unicellular organisms without these things. All cells have a cell membrane, cytoplasm, and genetic material. And even though only plant cells have chloroplasts, Plant and animal cells have mitochondria. Cell reproduction is the basis of life. Most cells reproduce by mitosis. 
dividing and creating a perfect replica of themselves. In humans, 25 million cells divide every second. The cell cycle begins with interphase, a waiting period that precedes mitosis. In the nucleus, we see the tangle of chromosomes, called chromatin. The chromatin is composed of protein and DNA. During interphase, DNA replicates, and each chromosome doubles itself. Mitosis itself is divided into four stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. With the beginning of prophase, some very important things happen in the nucleus. The double chromosomes, called chromatids, lie parallel to each other and are joined by a centromere. Two organelles, called centrioles, replicate and move toward opposite poles of the cell. Microtubules develop pathways for the dividing organelles and chromosomes to follow when the cells finally separate. Eventually, microtubules attach each pair of chromatids to both centrioles. In the second stage, metaphase, the paired chromosomes, or chromatids, line up near the middle of the new cell, ready to divide. Each of the new cells will have the same number of chromosomes in its nucleus. In the third stage, or anaphase, the chromatids will dramatically separate and proceed to the poles, following the network of microtubules laid down by the centrioles. In 3D, we can see how separating chromosomes look like. This structure is called a spindle bundle and forms only during mitosis. As the chromatids reach the poles, the cell membrane begins to squeeze toward the center and a new membrane forms between the two new cells. Finally, in telophase, a nuclear membrane begins to form around each of the new sets of chromosomes, forming two nuclei. Plant cells divide much in the same way as animal cells do. However, instead of pinching together, plant cells form a new membrane, called the cell plate between the new cells. Here, it resembles a straight line running down the middle of the dividing cell. Each of the new cells, called a daughter cell, has the exact number and type of chromosomes as the cell from which it was produced. Now they are once again in interface, and the cycle begins all over again. Cell research is crucial to understanding how life works, and it is one important part of the large field called life sciences. Now, as research on cells takes a huge step forward, the rapid evolution of technology is crucial. The possibilities are enormous as scientists continue learning more and more about these building blocks of life. For the cell's life is part of our life, and of all life on Earth.